Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Mac. This is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen over the past week. Links to everything discussed can be found in the description below, so let's get on with it. This week, the Dragonfly goes on sale, we see how the Caterpillar interior is shaping up, plus loads more. If you are still to sign up to the RSI website, please use my referral code as shown on screen or in the description and you'll receive 5,000 United Earth credits which can be spent in the Voyager Direct Store for your ships, your character or whatever you choose. You don't have to spend anything to sign up, it's only once you pledge that I'll be granted an RP point which will get me some little rewards in the future. Kicking off this week we have a 10 for the developers with Forrest Stefan and Sherry Heiberg. First question is when fleshing out a system do you determine the physical properties of the planets or the solar masses? Or is that carried out by the designers? Now they said the process is there's lots of steps. It starts with the law team and they discuss what kind of system they want. They start with the star and then the planets and then any cool science stuff they want to they want to see in there. They, and then they want to make it fun as well. So they need to make sure that stuff that's interesting and fun to play with. They all participate equally. Then Haddock has the final word. Dave Haddock, he has the final word on it. Then they send the info to the astronomers who they have working for them and they provide the math and make sure that it's accurate to as much as possible. The astronomers will also suggest things that make it more realistic. But once the data is back, the design or the tech artists work at it and get it into the game. Then Chris Roberts will have the final say. So second question, any plans for a Hornet visual pass? Now this is something that a lot of people are wondering about and things like the Aurora, the 300 and the Hornets are all getting new versions rather than being revamped. The Hornet is underway now. I'm assuming this is the F7A. It looks super cool. And instead of sprucing up the old ships, they're gonna create new ones. So you'll have the 2943 Hornet versus the 2946 Hornet. The Cutlass is getting a revamp though, and all the current gen ships like the current Aurora, the 300, the Hornets, they will get their damage states and be up updated to what the new tech is now, but they're not going to get a, a whole new pass on them. They're just going to release new ones and say that they are the older ones, an older model. So eventually you will be, you'll see like, like you see now, you see an, an old 69 Chevy driving around looks cool but then you get the more modern chevys and they look cool as well but you can clearly see the date differences anyway next question what size will star systems be in au they found the sol system is about 51 au but they checked that most systems in star citizen are around eight average can we get a good explanation regarding size now this is decided on a law stage so going back to the first question they will decide the size of the system very early on there needs to be a balance between sort of real world physics and playability it needs to be small enough to work with but large enough to make exploration good and interesting it is about striking a balance between a sim and a game it needs to be fun systems are varied in range and they can size generally between 5 and 15 as an average but you will get bigger systems so they can't really specify exactly next question what are the next ships expected in the hangar now down the line they say the caterpillar is coming and i'm very excited for that it's a little different a little rustic and industrial looking not like we see with Misk, for example, which is very sleek. Even further than that will be the Herald, which is coming later this year. Next question, can you explain how work on the Galactopedia is progressing? If you didn't know, the Galactopedia is pretty much a place where everything is stored. So if you need any information on anything within the verse, that's where you'll be looking. They say everything is spiraling out towards the star map, the cornerstone, which is the cornerstone of the Galactopedia. They're releasing the first version of the Pedia, of the Galactopedia soon. I'll show you some mock-ups that they've made. And we'll have access to this both from the star map and from the website. It is kind of like a glossary. I'm sure we'll be able to have access when we're in-game. Like they've done with the hangers, they've taken away from the website. Now it's all in-game. The Galactopedia will be accessed from your Moby Glass in the future. Or potentially from your ship's computer. So final question. How goes the character creation pipeline? Is there anything you can share regarding customization of our characters? And they say they're still heavy in development in the customization tech. They will support the ability for facial reconstruction. Eventually, they will tackle character height, but it won't be anytime soon. Currently, they say they're designing the OMCs, which is, it sounds like this is to be the main sort of protagonist group in Squadron 42, kind of like an organization. They will have some very cool outfits, different to what the Marines have, but more similar to the pirates. The OMCs will have things like hood mask designs different to the traditional. And a lot of their armor and what they're wearing has been scavenged from places and they've fixed it together. They've created their own armor. So you may have like a heavy armor or heavily right arm and then attach that to a medium left arm. It's all going to look a bit scrappy, but there will be some pressure sealed hood masks design. So a future design for us would be to have those concepts are already in and this sounds very interesting so it sounds like these are going to be the pirates that we fight against in squadron 42 omcs i'm not sure what that stands for if anyone 
as an idea, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, that was 10 for the developers. Very, very cool. Very short. Let me know your thoughts. So, in Around the Verse episode 2.36, they started by mentioning that the Dragonfly can be used on planets in space, and also the Saber model is in Hangar now. But straight on to news from Around the Verse, because we'll be discussing the Dragonfly next. In CIG LA, they, the item 2.0 has been continued. They're getting ship items working properly. QA is looking at 2.5 and its new features. Procedural planets will not be in 2.5. It has been mentioned there, unfortunately. Also, there is feedback on the forums for the Vanguard. So if you have any information that you want to share, go to the forums and let them know. CIG in Austin, they are fixing 2.4 issues. The crashing and not logging in, etc. They're getting them sorted. They're also finally hooking up the animation. That's been implemented now, the new animations. They're also hooking them up to the subsumption to get the AI in game as well. So they need to look realistic. Foundry Forge 2 in the UK. They've got the network guys overhauling the code. The next couple of patches should bring it up. AI feature is coming around the end of the year. They're fleshing out the AI to make them feel more real. So in Frankfurt, Foundry Forge 2, they're working on 2.4 regarding performance and optimization. Procedural planets, they say they're playing with new terrain. They're getting some awesome results. I just wish we could see more. They're also working on tags and zone systems. They're making the animation head stabilization feel better. Also working on facial tech and they're refactoring the physics grid to get it more solid. Plus lots of talks on AI. They are building the foundation there. It looks like they're really making a push on AI now. The ATV interview was part two with Jim Martin. Again, links are in the description should you want to watch that. Ship Shape was based on the Dragonfly. So this is the Wave 3 starter. The Reliant won the vote before, but now they're moving on to this one. It's not considered a starter vehicle. It's more of a snub craft. It's got rapid entry and exit. No canopy, fully exposed. You'll need a life support suit in order to fly it in space. It's a full ground vehicle as well. It has three modes. It's got compact, space and ground. You cannot go from space to ground on its own, its own accord. You need to transport it in a ship. Compact is sort of a small starting position where everything's folded up. You can roll out of a ship in that. And then it can function on space and on the ground, as I said before. Very cool. It hovers a bit above the ground with sort of grav lev plates, like the cargo carrying, but doing the opposite, I guess. It has room for a second seat and the rider will be facing backwards. So this is to help with boarding and raiding. And you can use your FPS weapons if you are sitting on the back seat facing backwards. Very cool. The shield generator capsulates the whole ship, it says. It's not the strongest shield, but it does a good job. They've made a new component class, which is going to be used for the Grey Cat, the Dragonfly and the Rovers. And anything that small, it's smaller than the usual, sort of the smallest ones that we used to have. Very, very cool. Again, we'll be talking about the Dragonfly next. The most valuable post goes to Eon Moon for his Sunset Buccaneers picture. Very, very nice. A lovely wallpaper. Anyway, that was Around the Verse. Let me know your thoughts, guys. So, it, the concept sale has finally arrived for the Drake Dragonfly. It is the latest in the Drake lineup. It's intended to offer an even lighter type of snubcraft. It is actually about half the size of the Merlins. But it has the ability to be used both in space and down on a planet. Although it cannot jump, nor can it be transitioned through orbit, it needs another ship to take it planet side due to the open canopy. If you try to go to the planet with that, you'll just die. It's a perfect choice for the budget-conscious pirate gang. It's small enough, fast enough, and maneuverable enough to get itself into tight spots where other ships wouldn't dare. Also useful for explorers. I can just imagine searching a large wreck or when traversing a, a planet. And it also sounds like it could hover over water too, is the impression I get. It's durable and inexpensive. It's a two-seater and designed to operate alongside other Drake ships. They say, imagine loading up a caterpillar with a trio of dragonflies, flying close support and retrieval for a cutlass red, or even strafing a massive cargo ship. Very cool. They showed us some updates of the Caterpillar 2. I'll show those pictures now. It's going to have multiple cargo bays available to be repurposed for a multitude of functions from armoured cargo hulls to effective search and rescue. The Caterpillar can also launch dragonflies directly from its cargo hulls as maybe protection, fighters or even agile scouts. So it's classed as an ultralight space and ground ship. It's 7 metres long. It's 6,000 kilograms. It's a two-person with one standard cargo unit. It has one TR1 primary engine six TR1 maneuvering thrusters, one size one power plant, two size one fix mounts, and one size one shield. The sale, there are multiple choices. You've got the black standalone ship at $35, or you've got the yellow jacket special edition concept, which is $35. This is the, first, this is the last time you'll get, be able to buy the yellow one, I think, unless you buy it secondhand potentially in the game. There's also a caterpillar and dragonfly bundle where you get the yellow and the black dragonfly and the caterpillar for $300. These all come with LTI. Or you can buy the Caterpillar as a standalone ship for $245. That comes with six months insurance because it is not the concept sale for the Caterpillar. With these, you get the hangar module and the poster as well. 
and it is available until the 27th of June. I'm very hyped for the Dragonfly. I just cannot wait to see all sorts of different gameplay aspects with this open canopy, small racer type ship. Very, very cool. Let me know if you've picked one up and let me know your thoughts on them. So in Reverse the Verse this week, they mentioned that 2.4 hit the live servers as we know. They wanted to point out that this is still an alpha. It's not, it's not released. People seem to think that this is the final game. Still alpha, still being tested. They are uncertain whether there'll be a 2.4.1. They are doing lots of server-side fixes, so it's coming along well. The Drake Dragonfly, as you know, was also on sale this week. They actually thought it was going to win above the Reliant when they put it out on the poll, and then everyone asked them for the Dragonfly, which is why it's brought to us now. Apparently, it was named after a bar in Gilmore Girls. I have no idea how I feel about that. Anyway, the contest for people who, who drew it, or who drew what they thought the Dragonfly would look like, you had to use physical crayons and pencils and so forth it couldn't be computer rendered even though there were some photoshops the winners are now picked they did announce them on the show i'm sure they'll let people know on to the q a much of it is about the dragonfly which is good first question being how many dragonflies will fit inside a caterpillar now they said there's a decent number but there will be some some limits it's not how many you can fit it's more about how many will stop the servers from melting they suggested about two per module as they are very very small the concept art shows a couple of Dragonflies within a caterpillar. I do like the caterpillar. Anyway, the next question. How is the huge spider mining drone coming along? And they say it looks cool and it's going to be part of Squadron 42. But with mining not being in the game yet, they have no reason to bring it to us. Hopefully if they bring out mining before Squadron 42, I would have thought they'd need to, but you never know. Then potentially we'll see it hopefully go on sale. Third question is, will there also be space motorcycles made by other manufacturers? Very good question. And they say, quite possibly, this is a new design from Drake. It's the first design of a sort of open canopy spacecraft. So potentially there will be. And something I noticed, I think it was within the post, was something to do with a, a type of race, like an open canopy race. So I would have thought further down the line, there will definitely be some form of, of racing with open canopies. Hopefully it won't just be in space. I really hope that we can actually have planet side racing like you see in Star Wars with the uh, with those races. That would be something super exciting to attend, but also to take part in. Much like you see in Gran Turismo, they have different leagues. I really hope that comes to fruition. So question after that, is there a plan for crew downtime during longer space travels? And they say, yes, there are plans. It's the kind of thing they will need, but it's too far away at the moment to say what activities there will be. So this is in case long duration flights, what will the crew get up to? There needs to be things like card games. I don't know, maybe games you can have, computer games you can have on your actual ship computers. What I'd like to see is maybe putting a basketball net inside of a caterpillar and having a little play around. That would be awesome. So next question, what utility does the Dragonfly offer? Anything for the Caterpillar? Now they say the Caterpillar will just have the ability to scramble multiple Dragonflies, but other ships can do this too, so it's not just set on Drake. The only reason why Drake marketed it together is because it's part of the Drake lineup and they want to sell their other ships. So next question is about the Herald status, and where is it? They say they're wrapping it up now. It is going through the grey box. I think it was ATV they said that the Buccaneer was in grey box and white boxing. That is not true, that it was, it was a mistake. They meant the Herald. The Buccaneer is still in its early doors of being created, which is a shame, but the Herald is coming soon. So a question after that is to do with the physical spaceship models. Is there anything new? They say there's nothing new yet. They need to build the game first, but I would love to see actual spaceship models, like sort of Airfix. I would definitely spend the time making them. Next question, if you get LTI with Dragonfly, can you upgrade to another ship and keep the LTI? And they say yes. The insurance you get for the initial pledge carries over when you upgrade. This is a good chance to get a ship that you own with maybe three months or six months insurance. Get the Dragonfly and then work your way back up to that ship again. There are ways to do it where you can get LTI on your ships now. Next question is to do the Steam controller and whether it will work in 2.4. They say right now it doesn't, but they are working on a lot of other controllers, including that, to make sure that they will work. So after that, they asked what are the limits for players on planets and the amount of ships. Now, this is obviously a question that's on everyone's lips. They say they're not ready to find out yet. They're constantly trying to push each patch until to get as many players in as possible. And we've seen this throughout the course of Star Citizen's development. Arena Commander started out with, with four players versus four players. Now it's up to 16 players. Obviously, Crusader, there are up to 24 players. There are still some issues, but they are pushing it. When it comes to planets, they can't get the actual figures until they have planets out. But they did say for the rest of the game development and after they will be trying to push the boundaries and Chris Roberts will always keep going until he can get as many until they feel like they've reached the right amount. So after that it was about ship commercials. 
And they say, they, again, like there won't be any ship commercials until cinematics have been completed for Squadron 42. What is the loner for the Dragonfly? He says it's most likely going to be the Merlin, but the Dragonfly will pop up sooner than later. And I can't imagine it'll take them too long. Big ships take a long time. Smaller ships take very little time. And then obviously these tiny ships, Christ, it could be in a couple of weeks. That's, that's a lie. I'm not, don't hold me to that. Anyway, next question is, can you upgrade the buggy to the Dragonfly using a CCU? And they say, no, unfortunately, it sounds like a good idea. Or it sounds plausible, but you can't. After that, it was, will the Dragonfly fit inside the revamped Cutlass? You say they do not know yet. They need to build out both ships first to see if it will fit. And when it comes to fitting, they say you may be able to cram it in, but it's more, more important as to whether it will function and you'll be able to take it out. So until they can get both of them fleshed out, they can't tell. There was a question about which ships will the Dragonfly fit, and it says the Avenger and the Reliant, they will not fit in. It will fit in the Lancer, the Freelancer, and they're still uncertain about whether it will fit inside the store or box under the Aurora. But because it's not 100% fleshed out yet, they, they still can't determine whether it will. But there is going to be a way to dismantle ships and transport them. Like we see with the Hull Sea, you can, dis you can sort of break a Hornet to pieces and put it into a, a container. And then take that across the verse. They're still working on it, so it'll come, but we have to wait and see. Next question. Will there be a fleet command and control module for the Caterpillar? And then they say they're not sure, as not all the modules are planned out, but if we ask for it, then I'm pretty sure it'll come along. They didn't say that, I'm just saying that bit. Next is the paint schemes, like we see on the Grey Cat. Obviously, we've got the yellow jacket for the Dragonfly. This is the launch exclusive for the concept sale, so it's a limited edition. There'll only be this one sale where you get the yellow jacket paint scheme. Standard production model is the matte black. They also picked out 16 different colours which could be in the game, but they're not certain yet, and they were a bit sketchy about that. So after that, it was, will there actually be new versions of the civilian Hornet? And this goes back to what we heard on Around the Verse. They say it is something they want to do, and it will vary from ship to ship. But going forward, they will likely do a new version of each ship for every year, like we see with cars. So today you may have the 2943 Aurora. Next year we may get the 2947 Aurora. And if you so wish to exchange, well, maybe not exchange, but upgrade, then you'll have to buy the new ship. And there'll be better features, better tech as, you know, they design things down the line. So it will feel like a living, breathing universe that gets better with age. Next question, will we get a tour of the new LA office? And they say, yes, Chris Roberts is back or he's there for the next two weeks. They've got a temper the chairman. So yes, potentially they'll try and get him to do it while he's there. Final question, will there be Hell's Angel style gangs roaming in the verse? And they say that is entirely up to us, but they do expect to see gangs or motorcycle crews touring around, maybe causing some mayhem. Very cool. So anyway, coming up next week, we have, there's two Dragonfly Q&A posts. There's an ATV, obviously, with a clothing creation deep dive, which is a deep look into how the clothing is made. Also, the Rita system is the next lawmaker's guide, and we're getting a 10 for the chairman with Chris Roberts. Very exciting. Anyway, that was Reverse the Verse. Let me know your thoughts. So also this week, we had a new Discovered post titled The Letters of Keller Lynch, which looks back over the discovery of the Elysium system. There was a galactic guide showing off the Nemo system. Bug Smashers episode 26 is available. And finally, the latest jump point has been released to RSI subscribers. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch, Super Mac Brothers Ryan. For every 50 followers we get up to 2,000, I will be giving away a $10 gift card. It's a lot of fun getting to talk to you all. We have our own private Discord. Do come along and say hello. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching and thank you to our subscribers. Plus a massive thank you to our patrons as you make this possible. If you like what we do and want to help us make it better, follow the link in the description to our Patreon page to learn more.